Hello! I am Abby of Top Knot Stitcher. My bangs have been trimmed and grown back out, so it is time for another video where I will be doing this a lot. It's cool. Um, thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, I want to start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who watched and commented on my first video. Uh, I I'm just so blown away by how welcoming you all have been. You've been so kind and encouraging and have really made me feel like I am part of this community and I really appreciate that. Um, I really didn't know what to expect when I put my first video up because I had not really thought that I ever would and then I had, I just needed to and I did and you guys have been so great. So thank you so much. Um, since I put up my first video, which was about three weeks ago, I have started watching all of Lost Tube, like all of it. Uh, before that, I had been kind of an inconsistent viewer. There were maybe three or four people who I had stumbled across and then gone back to watch everything that they had ever made. And then most other people I was not subscribed to. I just kind of would would click on whoever YouTube suggested or whoever was given shout outs or mentioned throughout and it was really haphazard, and that was fine, it worked, but now I really want to watch all of you, those of you who commented, I have you all in my, if you have a, if you have videos, you're in my playlist to get to eventually, um, so I'm working on it, and it's been really great, so thank you all for, uh, just like pushing me off the cliff of obsession, I appreciate it. Let's see, so today I have a lot to talk about, because I'm at my mom's house, I'm home in Kentucky visiting my family, and that means that I have access to all of her cross-stitch stuff and have a lot to show you because I found some of my pieces as a kid, I found some of my mom's pieces, and I found some of my grandmother's pieces. So I have a lot that I'm going to show you today. I am prepared this time. I have, <laughs> have notes. Um, so if you're curious, today we're going to do what I'm calling a lifetime cross-stitch show and tell for my mom, my grandmother, and myself. I have two of my current projects to show you. Um, I didn't bring everything home with me, obviously. Well, not obviously. I wish I had brought more, but whatever. Um, da -da -da -da. Let's see, I went with my mom yesterday to our LNS here in Louisville, Kentucky, um, which some of you said you live nearby and did not know about, so just another announcement, if you are anywhere near Louisville, Kentucky, there's a great shop uh, called The Finishing Touch that you should go check out. So my mom and I went there yesterday, so I have some things that we purchased to show off. Um, I also have a couple things I bought at Target this week that I want to show off and talk about. Show off is a weird word. Show you. I don't mean to show it off. You know, you get it. Um, I have some shout outs that I actually wrote notes down for this time, and then I want to talk about two books, which I meant to grab to show you in person, and I don't have next to me. I'm currently sitting on the floor, my favorite, with a pile of stuff that starts here and goes all the way around to this side. So there's nothing directly behind me, but everywhere else is covered, because we got a lot to talk about. I also, this week, will be putting in a little like table of contents in the description below with the times that I'm talking about each like segment. I love when people have like headings and things throughout their videos. I'm not interested yet in learning how to do that. I'm sure it's not that hard, but my editing skills don't exist yet. Um, but I really like being able to like skip. Sometimes I watch videos out of order because you'll mention something at the beginning and I can't wait to watch it. So I'll like skip around till I find it and then I go back. So I want you to have the option for that if you want, or if I'm talking about something you're not interested in, you can skip ahead more easily to the next part. So we're going to try that out. Let me know if you like it. Um, before I start talking, I want to do, well, I wouldn't call it a PSA. I have a question slash tip because I always watch my videos this way and I'm wondering if if any of you do this too. I always watch Flosstube and most other YouTube content sped up to 1.25 or sometimes one and a half. And I'm wondering if anyone else does that. I have yet to see anyone talk about it. 
but if you haven't tried it before, I would highly recommend it. Um, you can change it with the, I don't know which side it's going to be on, uh, the little settings button, the little gear shift, um, or gear, you can change the speed. And I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and I always listen to them at at least one and a half, usually double speed, uh, which takes a little bit of practice, so I wouldn't do that <laughs> just yet. Uh, but it means you can get through books faster, and it kind of helps, helps me stay from, helps me keeps me from tuning out as I'm listening. Um, and I don't really have that problem on Flosstube, I'm paying attention to you all. But since this is kind of just more of you're talking to yourself, um, there tends to be a lot of pauses, especially as you're going to like get things. And like, that's fine. I do it too. It's cool. But it makes for a great video to be sped up to 1.25 because it just cuts out a lot of the pauses. It doesn't distort the talking speed enough that it will like sound super weird. Um, it does sound a little different if you're at one and a half. It kind of sounds a little gibberish-y until your brain gets more used to it. Um, but I listen to almost everyone at at least 1.25. And if you haven't tried it yet, I suggest you try it out. It means you can watch more videos because they're sped up. You can watch more of them. Uh, on, the, on the other side, if you find someone who talks too fast, like sometimes I talk too fast, I'm trying not to do that in these videos, but in my real life, my mom tells me to stop talking so fast. Um, you can also slow it down to 0.75. I, I've never tried that. It might be too slow, but if it, if it works for you, then now you know. So all that to say, I'm going to try to keep this video under 45 minutes. That's my preferred listening time because sped up that fits into like an hour tv show and it, ma it makes me think in like smaller chunks of time that doesn't make any sense i like to watch them sped up you get it okay now we're ready to start showing things off um so i mentioned i'm home at my mom's house and i have a lot of things to show we're going to start with my grandmother and then move our way down. I don't have a lot of her things. My mom's mom is Ukrainian. My whole, my mom's entire family is Ukrainian. And my grandmother does a lot of, uh, or did a lot of cross-stitching and embroidery in the Ukrainian style, which my mom gave me a quick tutorial last night, and I'm not confident enough to explain it to you all. Um, but basically the stitching go you you would stitch in columns instead of in rows I think there's more to it than that but that's what she showed me um, there's a lot of other techniques involved um, in like traditional Ukrainian motifs um, so someone maybe go find a Ukrainian floss tuber they could do a better job do they exist are you a Ukrainian floss tuber I would love to know Anyway, my grandmother um, used to, you know, embroider their their clothing, uh, kind of traditional Ukrainian clothing, and then she also would make these dolls with beautiful embroidered outfits. So I have a couple of, well, one one set of, of clothes to show you that she made. It's this little shirt with these beautiful embroidered roses. It's the same design over the whole outfit. There's like a smaller version across the collar and they go down the sleeves and it's just beautiful. Um, same on this side, the back is all uh, just plain. And then this also has a skirt, which I believe would have something else over it. And there's usually also a vest element that goes over this as well. But again, I'm not really sure. So there is this skirt. It has the same design along the hem. So I thought that was really cool. Growing up, we had a couple like little dolls that she had made outfits for, um, and they also had a little flower crown, and they were just so cute. Uh, we have them; they're just packed away somewhere else, but these were accessible. So very, very excited. Prestigine is in my blood, so I'm really happy that I'm back into it. That's all I have to show you for now. If I find more things while I'm here, I will probably post some pictures on my Instagram. Uh, my Instagram name is also Top Knot Stitcher, so you can follow me over there. And with that, we're going to move on to my mama. 
Before I show you her work, I need to tell you this story. I mentioned in my first video that my mom used to cross stitch and switched over to quilting. And then I said we would come back to it and we never did. So now we're back to it. My mom grew up cross stitching, learned from her mother. Um, she used to make a lot of pieces as gifts. So she's done a lot of different wedding and birth samplers for I think everyone in our family. Uh, maybe not the youngest two, but almost everyone in our family. And then about 15 years ago, she switched over to quilting because cross-stitching was getting to be too hard on her eyes and quilting was, was more manageable. And she had quilted before that as well, but now she's, that's her new gift for people. Um, when I'm back in California, I'll show you the quilt that she made for me a couple years ago. It's amazing. Anyway, so a year ago, I started cross-stitching again and I was talking about it all the time. I was calling her with questions all the time because I don't have anyone else in my real life who cross-stitches. Not yet. Um, and she was like excited for me, but she was just quilting away. And then about three months ago, I mentioned floss tube to her and I was trying to explain it to her and she was like, what? What? <laughs> and then we moved on and um, we didn't talk about it again, but a few weeks after that, we were talking and out of nowhere, she was like, oh, I looked up floss tube. It's really cool. I really love Vana and Arlene Cohen and I forget the other one. There's one other that she really loves. <laughs> and so we had a nice little chat talking about our favorite floss tube videos and it was so cute. And then she started cross stitching again, 15 years later. So nine months of me talking cross stitching all the time did nothing but a couple YouTube videos and she started stitching again. Thank you all for getting her back into it. Um, so it inspired her to pick up some of her unfinished pieces that she wants to finish up. She's also been able to buy some new patterns. One of which she started, I don't actually, I should have grabbed that one. I don't know where it is. Um, she was in Connecticut a couple months ago in Mystic and got a little Mystic Seaport piece that she's probably about halfway through right now. It looks really pretty. So I'm gonna show you a few first. Sorry, they're all on the floor right here, which is why I'm looking over. So I'll show you a few of her pieces. I'll show you a few of her um, finished things that are not yet framed. Oh no, I'll show you, I have one whip that I was gonna show off because I think it's really cute. Um, I pulled this out and I've never really liked patriotic pieces. I have a very specific stitching style that I'm still discovering, but I don't like things that are too cutesy or um, too seasonal. That's just not my thing right now. Um, but I pulled this out and I loved it so much. This is the patriotic drummer boy and he's a snowman. <laughs> I think he's so cute. Um, so this is in her whip box, but he is almost done. He just needs a tiny bit of snow down here and his arms and his eyes and mouth. So that could be finished real soon. Um, this is from Bent Creek and it's called the Freedom Drummer Boy. So you can see she's, she's basically there. So I hope she finishes that one soon. Okay, her other whips, maybe later. Um, I wanted to show off this one. So I have two finishes that are not yet framed. And there's this little Ukrainian, I don't know, this wouldn't really be a sampler, but this little, these are little Ukrainian motifs. Um, she took a, a Ukrainian embroidery class. Um, this says it was stitched in 1993, so it's been a while, uh, where she learned a lot of the different techniques and this was her practicing, I think. It's cool. So I really love that. I hope that she frames it. Or maybe I'll just take it. I don't have the information other than the patriotic drummer boy. I don't have information on any of these charts or designers or anything. So if you are curious, I'm really sorry. I tried asking my mom. She couldn't remember. You can probably Google it. I'm sure. Maybe. I don't know. Um, okay. Then the next one is unfinished, but I have two of the framed pieces in this series to show off as well. This is a little winter piece 
that she made. It's looking beautiful. I love the little cardinal on a sleigh. It's lovely. Um, so I don't know who the designer is, but this is a series, and she also has done the autumn one, but I don't know where it is. But I did find Summer with a little watermelon patch and Spring with the giant carrots. <laughs> so I love this series. I hope that she finds the autumn one and Frank's winter so they can all be friends. I think these were hanging up, like the three that were framed. I remember them all hanging up together. Um, there's a little button on each one. So this has a watermelon button. This has a little cabbage button. And the winter, oh, there it is. There's a little, just a little present in the yard, as you do in the winter. So I love those. And that is all for my mom. If we find more things. I will, again, I'll probably post pictures on Instagram so you can look there. Or if we find a lot of things, maybe I'll just make a part two. Who knows? All right, with that, we are going to move on to talking about me. Um, I could not find yet any of the, the very first pieces I made as a child. I did a couple little like flower sachet things and I don't know where those are. I know my mom has one of them, and I'm sure the others are somewhere in this house, but I don't know where. But I did find my two finishes. These were both pieces that I made and then gave to my mother, and they are not yet framed, so she's gonna work on that, she says. Um, this first piece I made, I started when I was 11 or 12. I went on a cross-stitch retreat with my mom and I was, I was in middle school. No, I mean, I, yes, I was in middle school. It was the Salt Lake City Winter Games because we had that on all weekend and we sat and cross-stitched and it was amazing. And I started this piece, which I think I finished like within the year. Um, you see it? Yeah, so it's these little polar bears. I was very into polar bears. They were like a big a popular thing in our family. We have a ton of polar bear ornaments on our Christmas tree. And so I'm sure that's why I picked this up. I think this is just a, a dimensions kit. It's a kit from somewhere. Um, so I love it. It just needs to get, it needs to be washed and then it, then get framed. Um, I'm really proud of it. It was my first piece. I asked her a lot of questions as we went. I felt so important because it was on a cute snap and I had my little chart on a little magnet board and was highlighting as I as I went and all the other ladies at the retreat thought I was so cute and they loved me. I was really shy as a kid so I probably didn't talk to them but I enjoyed myself. Um, so I probably finished that also in middle school and then I was having trouble finding a pattern that I wanted for myself so I decided to be sneaky and I picked out a pattern that I knew my mom would love and then I gave it to her at Christmas when I finished it. And I have that one here. It's kind of long. So this is probably another Dimensions kit. It's from Michaels or Ben Franklin. Um, I picked it out for her because of the lighthouse. She loves the beach and she loves lighthouses. Um, I pulled this out yesterday and I was really impressed with myself. Like, this looks really good. Um, I think it might just be because I don't have a finished piece like this right now. But I'm just really proud of it. There's a lot of backstitching on these shells. There's a lot of half stitches throughout for, like, the sand and the sky. Um, I'm just really, really proud of it. So we need to get it framed. It would look great in this guest room, which I'm in right now. Uh, she has like a beachy wreath hanging up that has shells on it and it's like a, the walls, well I don't know if how you can tell, but the walls are this light purple. It would just look so good in here. So I'm really proud. <laughs> so I finished this in high school and then I gave it to her. And it's been sitting in a drawer for like 10 years. But soon it will have a place on the wall. I'm going to make sure of it. So those are my two childhood pieces, not really, I mean like child and teenhood maybe, 
Um, I started another piece in high school, and it is back in California. It's my oldest whip. So I'll show it off next time, and maybe we can talk about it because I need to figure out what I want to do with it if I want to finish it. So we'll see. Okay. Let's, oh, before I move on to my current stuff, I also have some ceramics that I did in college that I wanted to show you because here you are, here I am, here they are, and I love them so much. So I took a ceramics class in college and it was a hand building class, so not using a wheel. I'm gonna forget all the right terminology, but whatever. Not using a wheel, you use uh, like coils or sheets of like roll up sheets of clay and build that way. And I loved it because we had free access to go into the ceramic studio whenever we wanted. And I took it in the fall semester, so everyone in my life got a ceramics gift for Christmas that year because they were free presents. So um, I'm going to show you this one first. This is a tea set that I made for my mom. This was my final project. We had to use two techniques. So I made this tiny little teapot. And I have another cup, but it, it looks just like this. Um, I'm really proud of these. My teacher really loved the shape of my teapot. I really crave praise and attention from experts. So she gave me a lot of really positive, specific feedback. And a lot of people in our class kind of did like the bare minimum. And so I was one of the few who was like really excited about it and was doing extra stuff. Uh, so I think that helped, but I liked getting her <laughs> attention. Um, she helped me make this lid. It doesn't sit very straight, but it's a little, I love it. So I gave this to my mom for Christmas and now it sits in her guest room. It It is usable, but we don't use it. We just look at it. Um, and then this is the thing that I have made that I am the proudest of in my entire life. I love it so much. Again, I got a lot of like really great feedback on it because this was our coil project. And I think the requirement was that it be six inches tall It's not six inches tall. It's so beautiful. It's this gorgeous vase. I worked on this for a really long time. <laughs> I would go in on Saturday and just like spend all day in the studio. This, well, maybe not all day. <sighs> it was fantastic. Um, this is my favorite thing I've ever made, ever. It's stunning. It's black on the inside. My instructor helped me pick out like we spent, I think, like 30 minutes talking about the different glaze options, and then she helped me glaze it so it would turn out the way we wanted. <laughs> I love it so much. I have entrusted this to my mom. It is on loan because I did not want to take it when I moved to California, and so she's allowed to have it for now. I actually found it in a drawer because there's not currently a space for it. Now that she's like fully moved into this house, there's not really a space for this. Um, cause it's not her style. It's my style and that's fine. She's got my teapot. So it's in a drawer in the guest room and I take it out every time I come home and put it on the dresser and move her stuff away. <laughs> cause I love it so much. So those are my ceramics. I really would like to find a studio near me in the East Bay that does where you can like go in and work, but I think I would have to take a class first to like remember how to do stuff. Um, and it's a pretty time intensive thing. Like to do hand building, it takes a lot of time to get to your, like get your piece finished. And then the actual glazing process is, you know, it's many different steps. So I don't know if that really will fit my life right now, if it's going to be all cross stitch. So we'll just see. I love it. Okay. Next up, let me look at my list. Sure, I got everything. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, now we're going to talk about my two current projects. We'll do a little progress report. Um, this is what I have started referring to as Baby Harry Potter because it's like a tiny version, tiny, tiny version, shouldn't really even be compared to the Clouds Factory giant Harry Potter. And this is what I have so far. So last time I just had this lion and a couple letters. I've now added Lumos and Nox. This will eventually say Expecto Patronum. 
and then I've added the sorting hat and a broom. There'll be another broom. And then this is Ron's hair. He's a blonde in this pattern. And it bothered me more than the orange lion, but I've decided I don't care enough to change a lot of colors. The other colors look pretty normal, um, like the blue and the green for Ravenclaw and Slytherin. They're kind of brighter than you would normally have. Like they're not jewel tones, they're pretty bright. But I'm just gonna go with it. I think it's gonna be fine. Ron can be blonde. That's cool. I don't know how well it's showing up, but it's like a very gold color. But I love it. Also, this is my needle minder. I bought a pack of these at the hardware store, like eight magnets for a dollar, and that's what I use. I don't have a fancy pretty needle minder. I've yet to find one that I, I haven't really looked that hard, but I've yet to see one that I really need to have. Um, and I try to be kind of minimal in a lot of my style, so I don't know that I would really, I don't know if I'll find one that I, that I want. I don't know. I'm curious, but not enough to spend my own money on one, basically. So this works for me. Baby Harry Potter. I have not really been stitching that much in the last three weeks, which is why I'm glad I had all this other stuff to show you this week. Um, this is the only project I brought home with me, but I haven't stitched on my other... Well, I finished one whip, I'll show you, but I haven't stitched on the castle, the Hogwarts castle piece at all. And I really did not have much left on the finish that I'll show you now. So like, it's not a lot of stitching. I've made a new rule that I'm going to only cross stitch when I watch floss tube because I had started watching a lot of floss tube and then was just playing on my phone, which I don't do that much in my normal life anyway, but it was suddenly like playing a lot of Candy Crush while I was watching and I did not like that. So now I'm only cross stitching while I watch, but unfortunately that also coincided with a couple weeks of travel, so I have not really had a whole lot of time. So I'm hoping that when I make another video, probably in about three weeks as well, that I'll have more to show, more stitching to show. Um, though I will say part of why I felt really inspired maybe to make a video is because there are a lot of you who stitch so much and it's gorgeous and I love watching you, but I also feel like it's important those of us who are maybe not quite as intense of cross stitchers um, and don't have huge stashes and don't stitch every day like we can make videos too so um, if that's you and that's your reason or part of your reason for not making a video like please just make a video it's totally worth it so that's my little PSA okay I do have a finish I was really hoping I would have this framed for you I did buy a frame and I bought some foam board but I Last night did not feel like finding the iron <laughs> to get this in the frame. So I did finish this piece happily ever after. This is for my friend Gretchen. Um, last time I think I had just the bike and a couple of those flowers, so I added all of the text. I love this cursive font so much. I, I just think it's gorgeous. It was charted to be blue, but I changed it to this like tangerine color because her wedding color was orange. Her wedding color was not this tangerine orange, but I think it will fit better than blue. Um, and I really love how that turned out. So I'm gonna get it framed. I bought a little gray frame, which will go with the bike tire. Well, yeah, and the lettering here. And I'll be seeing her in a couple days and get to surprise her and I can't wait. I've never surprised anyone with stitching before. So I'm very excited for that. Okay. Next up, we have some purchases from the LNS. So as I mentioned, I went to our LNS with my mom yesterday, and I had, she like owed me a birthday present still, so I got to pick out some things. Um, and that was really fun, because I probably wouldn't have bought anything for myself otherwise, since I have a few whips and some projects kind of kitted up or waiting to be kitted up, but because I had birthday money, I did find some things. So first I'm going to show you what my mom bought. Um, she really loved the Oh Whale, <laughs> Oh Whale pattern that, oh, it's right here. This one that I showed last time that I had bought a couple months ago. 
so she wants to stitch this one too. Um, and then it's part of a whole series. This is from Hands On Design. Uh, Kathy is the name of the designer, and she has a floss tube channel that I just found. Go check her out. She just did a video with her si when her sister came to visit, and they were like showing off their things. And I really want that to be me and my sister someday. My sister does not cross stitch, but maybe we can get her to start. Anyway, she has this whole series called To the Beach, and so my mom also got this one with little sea stars. Not all stars belong in the sky. And these little beach houses, a little cottage by the sea. And she's super excited to stitch them. And I'm excited for her. Enabling her is very, it's a, it's a lot of fun. So those were her purchases. She also got the fabric for them. Um, and then I found two things for myself. Okay, we'll do the, do the easier one. So I found this Ink Circles Red Headed Bee pattern, and I really love it. I've discovered that Ink Circles might be my favorite designer. I think everything I've seen from them, every, I want to stitch it all. <laughs> so I own, an, I own one other piece I haven't started yet, and I thought this would be a great addition. Um, I love it. So I'm excited for that one. And then I looked through lots and lots and lots of bins of patterns, and I don't really like the primitive style, I don't really like patriotic styles, pattern, pictures, and the shop carries a lot of that. So I was having trouble. And then I found on the floor a bin of mirabilias, which are gorgeous. Like, your pieces, when you stitch these, they're so beautiful. Uh, but many mirabilias are, like, fairies and mermaids and they're gorgeous but like that's not my style at all um I think they're beautiful I just don't really want that it wouldn't fit hanging up on my walls but then I saw this one <laughs> and I thought oh okay so this is Florentina and I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see her face this is a fancy lady who is not here for your sass she is like giving some side eye and she's got a real fancy cat sitting next to her. And that's definitely the reason I bought it. Because if I'm going to stitch a mirabilia, it's going to be a cat lady. Just a really, really fancy cat lady. So this was kind of an impulsive decision. I picked it up. I went, ooh. And then I handed it to my mom. And then we walked out of the store like two minutes later. Which is not usually how I purchase things. <laughs> I really love her. I don't know how soon I'm going to stitch her. I did not get any of the materials for these two because I already have two projects kitted up and I would like to start at least start those first and then maybe work on getting all of this. Happy birthday to me! Um, yeah, so that was my that was my great day at the LNS. I also wanted to show you my Target haul. I don't like the word haul my target purchases. Um, I was at Target with my sister um, and found two things that I've been like looking and looking and looking for. They're very basic things, but I have a very specific style and it was really hard to find what I wanted that was the right size and shape. That will make more sense when I show you. So the first thing, um, both of these are bags. <laughs> They're just bags. <laughs> Um, I try to live as zero waste as possible without inconveniencing myself. If you are familiar with zero waste at all, sorry, if you are not familiar with zero waste at all, um, I just encourage you to search it. They'll do a better job of explaining it. Bea Johnson is like the big name right now. There's a lot of zero waste bloggers and YouTubers though. Uh, the kind of premise is that you reduce the amount of trash that you bring into your life by choosing more sustainable options, reusing things, and making things yourself. So I try to limit my trash as much as I can. Um, the biggest areas where I've made like a really big change have been in my grocery shopping. So rather than just bringing reusable shopping bags, I also bring my own jars and containers and produce bags. Um, and I shop from the bulk section, and I get my, my meat from the butcher counter. 
in my own containers. So I'm eliminating a huge amount of packaging trash from my grocery shopping. Um, when I do have to buy packaged foods, I try to buy it in glass when I can. Um, or make sure I'm choosing an option that's very recyclable um, or reusable. So that's been kind of like the most drastic change I've made. Like I've done other things, like I carry a water bottle with me and I always have tote bags in my purse instead of taking shopping bags. Um, I use little fleece face pads to take off my makeup instead of the disposable cotton rounds. I think of other little things. I'm not in the camp of making all my own beauty products to save on packaging um, or anything like that. I just try to always buy, I try to look for the item that comes with the least, comes with no packaging or as little as possible and as recyclable as possible. So that's kind of where I stand with it. Um, I'm not yet like super inconveniencing myself to make a lot of things or do without a lot of things, but I'm, I'm kind of working on it. <laughs> um, anyway, the next step that I want to take is to always carry with me some things so that I can avoid like single use disposable plastic items. Um, so I want to, I was, I've been looking and looking and looking for a little bag that I can keep um, a stainless steel straw, a set of silverware, a nap, a cloth napkin, and a jar to either use for drinking out of or to put like leftovers in. And I was having a really hard time finding ones that were sturdy and not like cutesy because I don't do cutesy. Um, but I then found these in the dollar section at Target. There are these little pencil bags. Oops. Um, and they've got a little pattern to them, but not enough that I care. Well, I like the patterns. <laughs> um, and then they're plain on the other side and this little zippered pouch. Um, so that will fit perfectly the things that I need. I'm going to keep one in my purse or car and one in my work bag. So I always have those ready to go. I'm very excited. I've been meaning to do this for like six months and just haven't. And it's one of those things that um, just like now it's like second nature to bring all my own things to the grocery store. And to I don't, I don't even like see the things that come in a lot of packaging. My goal is to make it really second nature to refuse straws because I have my own. Um, to refuse plastic silverware because I have my own, to use my own napkin, that kind of thing. Um, I still like eat at a lot of places that, you know, serve your food in disposable, disposable plates or whatever, but it's one step closer. The other thing that I found, um, which are like not that exciting, but I've also been looking for for a while and had trouble finding the right size, are just some canvas tote bags that they had in the dollar section. These were $3.00 but worth it. And so the first one is this little, oh, it's so cute, the farmer's market. This is as cutesy as I get. Um, it's like a great height and like, oh, it's wide enough that it will fit a good amount of stuff or deep enough or whatever. Um, so this is gonna be my new library bag probably because it's a great sturdy tote bag. And my library bag is about to bust open because I stuff that thing every week. Um, so I'm excited for that one. And then I bought two of this one because it was gray and I love gray. So it's the same. This one's a little taller. It says milk, better, milk butter, bread, and eggs. So this will be my new uh, tote bag that I carry with me all the time to hold my stuff. They're also the perfect size to keep cross-stitch projects in. That's what I usually go for. Um, it's just a tote bag. I did just buy my first project bag that I will be able to show you next time. So that might change my mind and I might need all project bags. Um, but for now, tote bag works perfectly. And this might, one of these might be a, pro a project bag, tote bag. I just love them. It's also plain on the other side. So if you're in the market for some tote bags, they had a few other patterns that were also really cute. So go check them out. They have a whole line right now in the dollar section, which is so not zero waste dollar sections. Um, but they have a whole line right now that's like a farm, it's like farm, kitchen, farmhouse, farmhouse, kitchen thing. It's cute. So you might want to check it out. Um, okay. Moving right along. I have a few shout outs that I actually wrote notes for this time. Um, I had a couple others written down and I don't know what I did with that notebook. So maybe I'll have more next time, but I wanted to shout out three people. 
Um, two of them are new floss tubers, so spread them the love. Um, but first I want to shout out Michelle Garrett from Bendy Stitchy. If you don't know her, please go watch her. She's awesome. Um, she's like newer. She's only been making videos for a few months, but it's like she's been here forever. She's fantastic. Um, she is like such a great encourager and like advocate for this community. And she tries to be really modest about it because there are a lot of other people who are doing great things for the, the cross stitch community. Um, but she's like a really big voice in that. She's like very... Uh, encouraging and like really promoting, leaving comments and, and engaging in the community and uh, shouting out like new floss tubers and helping them feel really welcome and sprinkling stitchy kindness, all the good things. Um, so she's really great. Michelle, <laughs> you were the last person who I like watched your whole history of. And right as I was watching your most recent video at the time, I started thinking like, maybe I should do this. And then in the video, you were like, you should make a video. If you're thinking about it, you should do it. And I was like, okay. And then I made it. So Michelle, you're like 90% of why I had the courage to do this. So thank you. Um, next up, a, a new floss tuber, Stitchabella. Um, I think her name is Sarah. I think. She's from Australia. She's adorable. She's new. I think I just saw a new video from her pop up the other day. Um, she is really cute. In her first video, she was holding her baby for most of it, and he was really cute. And I can't wait to see more from her, so go check her out. Um, and then finally, um, oh, another, like, brand new, just posted her first video this month, but I've been following her on Instagram forever and, like, obsessing over her forever. Um, her, I, oh, no. I can't remember your first name. I'm so sorry, but Felicity Stitches. Uh, she's really, really great. Um, she, sorry, I'm looking at my notes so I'm getting the right numbers here. She just started a Chatelaine and she was talking about Chatelaines and like made me want to start a Chatelaine too. <laughs> um, yeah, her stitching's beautiful. Uh, so go check her out. And I'm, uh, I'm trying to remember the other people I was going to talk about. I'm sorry. I'll talk about it next time. I'll get you. Okay. Last, we're going to talk about books. I love when you all talk about books at the end of your videos. I think it's awesome. Um, it gives me like a little bookish fix because I, I can never get tired of talking about books. Um, so I have two that I wanted to talk about. I don't have them. I don't know where it is. So I'm not even going to go look for it, but, um, I have one book I just finished and then one that I'm listening to and I want to I want to tell you about them. So the first one that I finished was I actually reread this book. It's called The Storied Life of AJ Fickery and it is by Gabrielle Zevin or something like that. It came out a few years ago. I read it a few years ago. It was one of those books that as I was reading it I was like trying to slow myself down because I was like this is going to be one of your favorite books and you need to cherish this moment of reading it for the first time. And I just reread it for the first time. Um, I read it on the plane. I read it in one sitting. I cried a lot. It's really beautiful. It's the story of this bookshop owner. He has a bookstore on like a really small island up in New England. And I don't want to give anything away, but like if you like reading, you should probably read this book because he, it's like a book for book lovers. <laughs> um, it's like a family drama along with it. it. There are a couple like sad things. So if you don't like to cry to books, I cried in this one. It's great. It's so good. Please go read it. Um, and then I also just started listening to The Magnolia Story by Chip and Joanna Gaines. And I had never watched their show. But, you know, you hear about them. They're adorable and everyone loves them. They do Fixer Upper on HGTV. They might do other shows. I don't know if they have another show. But Hulu now has three seasons of Fixer Upper. So I have been watching a lot of Fixer Upper and listening to this book. And it's adorable. It's really amazing getting to hear their story and how hard they've worked for um, their families and just how they've really discovered what they love to do. Um, it's cool go check it out. And they narrate the book themselves. So it's, that's an extra fun thing. Um, 
that's everything on my list. And we're at 45 minutes, which was my goal. So way to go us. Um, thank you all so much for watching and I would love to hear from you. Um, whatever you want to tell me. <laughs> um, I would love if any, if any of you are stitching this or know someone who is stitching this, like, please let me know because I'm dying to see what it looks like actually stitched. And I haven't been able to find that yet. I mean, I got her yesterday, so I haven't looked that hard yet, but I love her and she intimidates me. So I need some encouragement with that. If you can point me in the right direction. Love her. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.